if the government had just been like, yeah, we're going to give this vaccine to the, the old people and people at risk, they'll get it first. And um, as soon as we as soon as we give them these people the vaccine, lockdowns lifted, right? I'd be like, sure, no problem, get the vaccine. But the fact that we have we we have this political system around these vaccines makes me doubt what that. And then so many other people as well are saying, what is in these vaccines? Because it's the way the governments the way the governments are behaving. And look at Israel. I mean, why? Is Israel under lockdown right now? And and why do we need vaccine passports to protect too? Give the old people the vaccine. Done. You know, if you want to get a vaccine, optional. You know, it's this whole thing around it that makes what would be just just by talking to you. If 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 I, were, if I was just talking to you without all the pressure to take these vaccines, I would think yes, this is, doesn't sound that bad. You know, from my own biology, but it's the biology I know plus what I'm seeing with the, the governments. And, and the yeah. governments don't seem to be listening to the people right now. I mean, and and the, and the media does not want to report on the the thing happened this weekend with the, the massive protests. One of the papers, I think it was Sky, forgive me if I'm wrong, says hundreds of people in London are protesting. There were 100,000 people there almost. Have you seen some of the long view things of this thing? So this is what is either, either the media and the governments are making a really bad PR problem or we are the, the conspiracy theories are right and we're, this is a takeover. Yeah, I don't so see any other options? I hope this is the first one because I want to have a, I want to live my life in peace. You know, I don't want to have to. Uh. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let, there's a lot to unpack here, but I want to try to unpack it as much as I can because I think this is important, um, and I think that both sides have done things that are not helping the solution and by the both sides i mean really everybody involved you know the people like us and then the policymakers. so um i agree with you that the way the government is behaving seems like there's something strange going on i agree with that but the more and more i look at it the more and more i realize that the, they're acting the way that they're acting for political ends um, to gain favor with certain groups of people, um, to kind of dance the dance for the media narrative. And we have already discussed that the media really has no reason to tell the truth anymore because everything, the only thing that sells is sensationalism. And so I think that those two th things together are like this weird negative feedback loop that just ends up resulting in stranger and stranger behavior. And then us who are outside of that sort of cyclone of chaos we're we're just sitting here looking through our lens looking at their behavior and we are confused because it doesn't line up with common sense and so our first inclination is to go down the path of conspiracy theory i will say that i am typically very resistant to conspiracy theories and here's why is that i want to put any conspiracy th theory through the ringer First, to I want to ask all the tough questions. I want to make it. I want Same to make me. People, I want to make people explain it and show me data and tell me why. Because if I mean, you, when you think about the conspiracy theories that are coming out, they are so diabolical that <laughs> if it turns out to be true, I want to make sure I'm right. And that is where we have messed up as as an as a general population. Is we have run with these things without asking the hard questions and then they get debunked and we look like the, the idiots, right? And so that's part of what I'm trying to do here today is get the right information out there. So we all have a good foundation. We know what the right questions are to ask. And then we can, so then we can do like kind of what Project Veritas does in America. They, they expose things that they know to be true. It's not, they're not chasing dragons. Project Veritas, um, look at that. Yeah, they're a great, I mean, they have their own sort of um, provocateur at their head, but, you know, they really haven't been wrong yet. Uh, I'll put it to you that way. Um, so, yeah, I think there's two forces at play. I, I do think, I do agree that many of the policies coming out of the politicians don't seem right. They don't seem to align with common sense. I I will be the first one to tell you that I agree with you. Once, once we get enough people vaccinated to reach, 
you know, the threshold, some call it herd immunity, where a virus really can't propagate any more dangerously, then the lockdowns need to be lifted. We, and for a variety the, of- We're running out of time, my friend. People are going crazy. People are losing their, I have people on LinkedIn asking me for money, right? I'm, people like you look at the profile, they're high performance. Like you think they're millionaires. People like to keep a nice face until they're, they're about to lose their house and their families on the line, their children, okay? I agree. We don't have much time. This this could go powder keg, right? This this people are very angry. I have people on LinkedIn messaging me, professionals. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they don't they don't want to say anything because they're professional because they're then they want to come against the narrative, you know. I have people messaging me, and they've got clients don't want to lose business, but they're really really angry. Okay, so we. I don't know. I don't know what this. I, I'm not on enough energy, you know, because like sometimes. I mean, I get I get two hundred times more engagement when I post about vaccines and COVID than I do on business, you know. Yeah, I know, and, it, and again, I think, I think our role, our if if our intention is to is to have a peaceful resolution, then our job is to get the right information to the right people that can get into the ears of the policymakers and change the narrative. Right? We we need to get to a point where our collective voice is a, the, the first, and I cannot stress this enough, our collective voice doesn't mean anything if we are focused on falsities. We have to make sure that our voice is right first, factual, hard truth, can't dispute it. And then we join together and we create a collective and then we use that collective to start pressuring our policymakers. In my country, that's Fauci. I think Fauci is... Again, I, I, as I stated before, I understand the stance that he took in the beginning, but to tell us that now in the midst of 40% of the population being vaccinated, that we should be wearing now two masks and continue to social distance, it, it just, he calls himself an, you know, he refers to himself as an expert, but that goes against the very foundation of immunology. And so, and I can tell at least I, I I can't tell I I perceive that he is being pressured to take a certain stance and that's where we come in with our collective voice. But the first thing we have to do is make sure that we are coming from a place of knowledge, indisputable fact. And that's Absolutely. where I think, we, I think that's where we bear. And I think that you are important because you have a voice to the the army. A lot of people respect what you who you are. I think. Your, your unique qualification it's, it's um it's fantastic you know and um to hear your answers I, I really hope that um your voice gets to the people that can make decisions you know because you know it's i want to live a, a life in peace and quiet you know and uh Me too, man. sometimes i get to dark places you know with this this what's what's going on you know and um yeah mate 